Hi again, uh, back at Gonzalez Bias, and uh, last week I talked to you about the family of Fino and Amontillado, which are dry sherries which are aged under a floor, or aged under a floor, which is this yeast which covers and protects the wine, and then oxidative aging, which means there's no floor. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about a different family of sherries, and this one's a little bit more confusing. This is the family of uh, essentially Olorosos, cream sherries, medium sherries, and very, very sweet sherries. Now, the big difference between the two is that this one does not get aged under a floor. It's always in contact with oxygen. Now, we're going to start with the Oloroso, which is this one right here. So, an Oloroso is when the winemaker makes his wine out of Palomino, just like Fino's, what he'll do is that immediately he will bring it up, he will fortify it, he will add alcohol to bring it up to 18%, roughly. Now, why does he do that? Because with that much alcohol, the floor, this film, can't survive. So it doesn't form. So what you end up having is a wine from the very beginning that's in touch with oxygen, which, when you look at the color here, that's what happens when oxygen hits wine. Now, an Oloroso is dry. You'll find nuts, figs, dried dates, all sorts of dried fruits. Very, very complex. But what they can also do, and this is where things get a little bit more confusing, is that there's another grape called Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez is a grape which they pick and which they use primarily to bring sweetness to sherries. So when it's picked, what they do is they lay it out for two weeks in the sun, they flip it over once, and what that does is it concentrates the sugar in the grape because all the water in the grape evaporates. It's then made into a wine, but a very, very sweet wine with low alcohol. So what they'll do is they'll add, they'll fortify it, bring it up to 18%, like this one here, and they'll put it in its own Solera system, which is basically a system of barrels um, which will just hold this wine for however long they want to hold it. So, I'm going to bring you another one, the 1847 here. Now, this is available in Quebec right now. And this is called a cream sherry. So, what essentially it is, is this wine with an addition of 25% of this Pedro Jimenez. And what that does is that it brings a certain amount of sweetness. So, after four years, the winemaker will say, okay, I'm going to want to make this wine here into this. He'll take 25% of the volume, add it, and then the two will age together, and the result will be this, a cream sherry. So for those of you who like your sherries a little bit sweeter, that's what you go for. If you want it a little bit drier, very complex, oxidized, so with lots of nuts, figs, dates, and stuff like that, you go right here. So there is one other one called a Paolo Cortado. Now this is a very, very, uh, I guess it's a little bit of a hip sherry these days, and a lot of people uh, love their Paolo Cortado. So essentially what a Paolo Cortado is, is an Oloroso, but made with very, very, very good base wine. Uh, when the winemaker finds something which is extremely complex and extremely delicate, he will get, okay, this I want it to be a Paolo Cortado. So what he's going to do, he's going to age it, like an Oloroso, and this can be aged anywhere from eight to, I know, I've tasted Palos. What's the, what's the, hey, what's the oldest Palo Cortado they have here? Uh, right from the beginning. They get lost in the library. They get lost in the library. They, these things can age for decades and decades and decades. So that's a Palo Cortado. Oloroso, but made with really, really fine wine at the very beginning. Very delicate, very finessed, very rich. So 